This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I share what to eat, how to move, and how to think so that you can have the energy and the vitality that you want in this second and better half. And today, you may have noticed, this episode doesn't have any music over the introduction. If you've listened to Flipping 50 for a while, you know that most of the episodes do. It's when I get ideas and no time to send it off to my podcast support team that probably drives my team crazy. And this is one of those times. But I do believe sometimes done is better than perfect or good enough is good enough if the alternative is never doing anything. And this is one of those episodes where I was so excited to share things with you that hopefully will inspire you to start strength training if you haven't, or if you have a strength training program to do it more consistently or start strength training more effectively. Wherever you are on that continuum, likely if you clicked this podcast title, then this is for you. So here we go. How do you start strength training after 50? Number one, remember this. Start light if you're just beginning. When you start strength training, there is no need or benefit to lift heavy. And this is true for any age, whether you're talking about a teenager, a 20-something, 50-something, or an 80-something. The neural component, which is your nervous system, is responsible for changes in muscles. The first four weeks at least, and many times we've said the first four to eight weeks potentially. So more weight won't get you more results faster. Allow your connective tissue to make the necessary adaptations while your brain is flipping on all of the switches and you'll both be doing it as effectively as you can and safely and probably reducing your risk of injury down the road because you will have a stronger foundation. Number two for my tips today is avoid working the same muscle group two days in a row. Now, if you've been a Flipping 50 fan, you know I have very strong opinions about this based on research. So I want to clarify, that's not just a personal opinion, but it's personal for me in that I care a lot about my clients, my customers, or my students, and I've seen results. I've seen the research proven true for 34 years. So here's the tip. The breakdown in the muscle that occurs during exercise requires the rebuilding and repair of muscle. It's the days of rest and recovery between the workouts when you get fit. The workout or the exercise only provides the potential for fitness. It is the rest that delivers the actual fitness. Rest or more rest, not more exercise is the answer particularly after 50, when we each take a little bit longer to recover than we once did in our 40s and our 30s and our 20s, certainly. It's not a limiter. Recovery time, having the need to recover more, can actually vary between people tremendously. Two 20-year-olds, for instance, may recover at very different times. There is such a wide variety that it ranges in one study between 1 and 72 days <laughs> doing the same workout to recovery. So that's a little crazy. But remember that your recovery need, if it's longer, that's not a limiter to the amount of work or to the fitness level you have unless you in ignore recovery. So be sure you're including it. A sure sign you need more recovery is that you feel fatigue or you still feel soreness when you're beginning a new workout. But a lot of people never really get sore. Even after a tough workout, they know they worked hard. They they felt it during, but don't necessarily feel sore. That's unique to you too. So you can't always gauge by whether you're sore or not, because certainly if you're never sore, that's not a good one. The third tip is work to fatigue. From the very beginning, get used to the idea that you're going to be working from fatigue, even during those early weeks when you actually should probably stop exercise and a session, feeling like I could have done more. That's okay because it's about the neural component, your nervous system, and getting your joints and ligaments ready for doing more. But 
but you want to keep it back of your mind and not very far back is the fact that after two to four weeks of consistent exercise, that you can begin reaching fatigue. And this tip is one of the absolute most important for women in midlife who want to start strength training. Working the full body, every body part with each muscle group reaching fatigue is better for changing body composition, meaning reducing fat, increasing your lean tissue, than is just moving fast and getting tired. There's a big difference there. Make the distinction between rapid movement that makes you tired and movements that help you reach muscular fatigue at the end of each set. The next tip is eat enough protein to repair muscle. If you're going to start strength training, you're going to see and feel some results, even if you change nothing else. If you want to take the next step, and also change nutrition. You'll see and feel even greater results. And at some point, if you don't have nutrition going for you, your results will plateau or slide backwards. In the stronger 12-week program, one of the important tweaks we make after the beta test was to include information about how to eat pre and post exercise, along with how meals throughout the day and what's in them, the macronutrients like your protein, your carbohydrate, your fat content can either help or hurt your results. The building block of muscle is protein. The timing of your protein is more important now than ever, meaning midlife and beyond. Muscle protein synthesis begins to decline with age. And that means that a 70-year-old needs almost twice as much protein at a meal or post-workout as a 20-year-old to reap the same benefits. And yet they can. That's important to, to make that distinction. The results can be the same. You're not limited by your age as long as you adapt to what changes are occurring because of age. You can. Age is not a limiter here either as long as you consciously consume protein on a per meal and a post-workout basis, meaning we're, we're really needing to get away from is that protein a percent of your diet at the end of the day or the total of protein grams you take in a total at the end of the day. That's not going to help you as much as per meal did you get 25 to 30 grams of protein. After your workout, did you get 25 to 30, and many studies will say for the older adult, up to 40 grams of protein. Next tip, progress. Many older adults, even younger ones, particularly women, however, halt their ability to increase lean mass and decrease fat because they continue to do the same protocol, meaning the same sets and repetitions and the same weight without progressing or changing the stimulation on the muscle. If you're stopping your set and you walk away having reached fatigue, still with good form, <clears throat> or without, let me clarify, without having reached fatigue, and still you have great form, you probably miss the opportunity to change your body. You want those last few repetitions to feel like, uh-oh, I'm beginning to lose my form. I should probably stop. When you start strength training, you do want gradual increase to allow those joints and ligaments the opportunity to adapt. So I'm repeating myself. It's a good message. You'll get to a maintenance phase, but that doesn't mean you'll maintain the same exercise program. That, unfortunately, would cause you to regress your body is too smart and it adapts so easily that if you have the best program in the world right now, if you're still doing that same program, sets and repetitions and the weight are the same a year from now, potentially even six months from now, you won't be making more progress. You will be sliding backward. And that's why in the Stronger program or any of Flipping 50 programs, the videos change weekly. The exercises your joints can do are somewhat limited. You only have certain ways you can flex and extend, but the sequence variations are unlimited. And a wise progression keeps getting you progress. The next tip, 
train in full range of motion. So reflect on this one. While some joint issues may suggest appropriate limited range of motion, for the most part, you want a full range of motion for each muscle group. Free weights or machine weights, including cables, often allow this best. Tubing and band exercises have their place. However, the elastic property of tubing is so variable from, from start to end in the same tube. I mean that. I don't just mean from one product to the next or a brand to the next. Simply from the start to the end. It's so variable that the resistance is not optimal for you throughout your range of motion. It's best only at a part of the motion, and generally that's at the very beginning or it's at the middle where you already have a belly of the muscle that is probably stronger to begin with. But where do we tend to get hurt? At the joint insertion and origin, right? So where the muscles go in. Next is in this special podcast mini-series. It's just a two-parter. I'm going to address how you make any strength training exercise more effective once you've gone beyond the start strength training space and you're ready for more or you're already in it and you just like to have a plan for what's next if you are beginning. Until then, if you have a question, leave it below the show notes at flipping50.com forward slash start strength. And I would be so grateful if you found value in a tip in this podcast or confirmation that you're on the right track. If you would, one, share this with a friend and two, leave a rating in iTunes. Both really help me reach women who have amazing gifts to share so they can get the energy and the vitality they want to do it and to help you surround yourself with women on the same journey. So you're getting less both internal and external resistance for making changes. Let's start flipping 50 together.